right. Oh my gosh. Good morning, everyone. Okay. First things first, we need a sound check. Uh, can someone let me know if you can hear me okay with like, there's no like weird echoing or anything. Let me know if you can hear me. And in the meantime, I will say good morning to lots of lovely people waiting. So Thea is here. Lisa England. Hi, hi. Um, Lisa, oh, Liz Bebe, or is it Beeb? It's a cool name. Anyway, slice it. Jan, good morning. Jeanette Childers, hello. Oh, and Jeanette, um, I want to thank you. In my original post for this drawing, I had said Mark Cameron instead of Cameron Mark. It was just my like art brain. Um, so thank you for that catch. And I was able to change it. So I really appreciate that. Um, I appreciate when my people are looking out for me. Barbara is here. Good morning. Sharon and Tamberly. Julie Phelps is here. Cheryl. Oh, good. Linda Brown. Thank you for saying that you can hear me okay. All right. So there's something weird with my audio or anything. You can all see me, hear me okay. Hi, Don Paul. Nice to see you. Okay. Wonderful. Oh, hi, Lori. So great to see so many familiar faces. Love it, love it, love it. All right, I can't wait to draw with you today. We This is my third Facebook Live um, in recent history, I guess. And today I'm opening up to YouTube too because I know there's a lot of people that aren't Facebook. So now everyone can play along. So I, I'm i going to jump right in. Um, I love drawing faces. I'm like super obsessed. Um, and today we're going to draw a face. And the reason that I'm drawing today the whole like reason for this whole challenge. So I'm starting a drawing series challenge, um, which I've done a lot. I think I've done them every year since 2018. I've done the 100 Fun Fab Faces drawing challenge. We've done the 50 Fun Fab Fairies challenge. We've done the Whimsical Women of the World. Um, so this is going to be called Expressions Sketching Challenge because so many of us, totally myself included, have like faces where their faces are all boring. Look at all these grumpy faces behind me. Grumpy, grumpy. Okay. She's drunk, but grumpy, grumpy. Okay. That is actually like a real dude, but even in life drawing classes, which that is from the, everybody is like the most serious face in the whole world. So this whole drawing challenge is designed to get us out of the resting bitch face sketch look and on to some fun expressions. So, so much fun. And not only are we going to be doing fun expressions, but we're also going to be teaching, I'm going to be teaching you how to do figures to go with our faces. How for refreshing is that? So we are going to be covering a ton of materials. This, so this is like day one, week one. However, I don't want to like, if anybody is new to drawing faces, this is what today is also for. So while we're doing like a sassy face, it's not like a crazy expression. So if you've, this is your first face you've ever drawn, I promise you, you can do it. Like everyone can do this one. And all I'm going to be using is a pencil and paper. Like that is it. I, I probably will use a blending stump to get fancy. If you don't have a blending stump, you can just use a Q-tip or your finger. So like it's super bare bones. Um, um, mom, 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 mom. Okay. Awesome. Oh, I'm excited. All right. Heidi's excited. Former Wonder Bundle member. member. Well, it's so nice to have you back. It's so great. Um, I'm also excited too. Um, <laughs> Linda says I'm used to our zoom call. So I'm shaking my head and waving. Hi, Linda. I can feel you spiritually waving at me. Amazing. So, so fun. Okay. So great. So all you're going to need again is a piece of paper and a pencil. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to add this to screen to, um, to the stream so you can all see me. Um, so today's lesson is free. It's on YouTube and Facebook. If you want to join me for the whole challenge where we're going to be doing 10 faces and also 10 figures, this is how it's going to work. This is actually the same like checklist, checklist sheet that I use for my 50 fun fab drawing series. So this is how you make the most of these drawing series. But I'm going to give you a lot more help this time than I normally do because um, I've had some requests from my drawing club members. So this is week one. This is today, right? We have our pink circle one. So this is draw the face along with Karen. This is so tiny. I, I know it's hard to see. So the first one is draw the face along with Karen. So this is you today drawing, okay? So to maximize your drawing skills, Every two weeks, I deliver you a new lesson. So 
You, in the meantime, are going to do one, two, three, four, four more variations if you want to. It's all, it's all optional. It's not real school. So four variations. And then we're, I'm going to give you one lesson on figures. So I'll just see, show you what that looks like. Now, I'm also starting my figures book at the same time. So there are a lot of ways to draw figures. And I'm going to be teaching 10 of those a lot of ways in this series. So there's a lot we're going to cover. So today's face is this one. Uh, and I have permission from Cameron Mark, not Mark Cameron. <laughs> He's on Instagram. Look him up. He is amazing. Cameron Mark. He, this is his face. I asked if we could draw it. He said, yes, this is a copyright free body. So I put, put his face on this body and I'm going to be teaching you the nine heads method for drawing this figure. Uh, I forget what date is on the calendar, just so you know the rhythm of how the challenge is going to work. Okay. So in the past, I've never had a figure that's new. Number six is new. And in the past two, three, four, and five variations was just up into the in individual. And I would say something like, uh, change your, your art supply. Like if you did it in pencil, do it in marker, or you could like change the nose or change the eyes. So in the past people have really, I think some people have struggled with like coming up with different ways to change the face, which I totally appreciate. Um, <laughs> so what I've done, um, is so in my drawing club we have zooms every month um they were expressing to me like gosh we would really appreciate having help in coming up with those variations so of course i'm like okay well i'm gonna give you some help you gotta give you whatever you need so uh and i've already filmed these so what i'm gonna do for this first one is actually film these different variations and i'll just give you a sneak peek right now because they're so fun so like today we're gonna be literally doing her face i'm gonna be doing her in pencil Okay, but then in this 12 page packet, which you have if you join the challenge, um, I give you tons of resources to help you think outside the box in different ways that you can come up with your own variations. So you can like change the hairstyle, change the skin or hair color, uh, add accessories like hats, hairbands, eyeglasses, jewelries. So this is a 12 page PDF that I kind of came up with that will help you to come up with some of these alternative ideas. We have some hair suggestions, more hair suggestions, more hair suggestions, <laughs> nose var variations, um, lots of eye variations, but also like inspiration. And you can use these for other projects as well, obviously. There's some fun mouths and some more fun mouths. So what I did is I actually went ahead for my drawing club members, I actually went ahead and did like full blown projects. So you can see how using that packet, I would create different variations. So for starting with this, I made this one using the packet and I was like, oh, okay, let's change the hair. Let's change the art supply and let's add glasses and see what she looks like and we'll color her in. So this is actually gonna be your lesson on Sunday. So this way you actually are learning how to be creative and make variations and not just me being like, okay, now go make some variations. And this other one I have to show you because it's so freaking funny. And I had so, uh, so much. Can I address proportions in an easy way? Yes, absolutely. That's literally what I'm here for. Um, the, uh, no, they're not available yet. They're coming out on Sunday for drawing club. Okay. So, these are all going to be in the drawing club. This is like a formal fun fab drawing club exercise. Um, today is free, number one. And if whoever else wants to join, come on with me and join. You can sign up today and tomorrow at awesomeartschool.com. This girl is hilarious. So what I did for this one, do you remember uh, like a couple weeks ago when I was doing a Facebook Live and we did the martini glass with no free drawing? We had to, we had to use a ruler or a template for every single line. And I told you that the inspiration for that came from that this one time I did a face like that and it was super funny. Well, I did that <laughs> with this girl yesterday. So I made this entire project using that same reference again. So the way I changed her this time 
was I were working on tone paper and every single line or mark made on this whole project was made with a ruler and a circle template or like an ellipse template, <laughs> which is hilarious. Cause you were like, Oh my God, like, how do I, like, how do I represent anything? Like it's so wonky and weird. And of course I'm laughing through the whole lesson, but you're also getting a lesson in like tone paper and you know, shading. So even though it's like funny and goofy, it's still like massively creative. So that's like two super random, but totally fun ways to make variations off of the drawing. So I hope like, so at the whole point again of these challenges for the people that have gone through them before is your drawing skills actually super skyrocket because you're getting in so much practice. Um, and then especially for this challenge, the faces are going to be like massively expressive. So this is like the tamest expression that we have. Cause I'm like, I just, for anyone who's never drawn a face before, I want to make sure that we can do it. So super fun, super funny drawing club. So if you, if you know, you already want to do all, all the drawings of figures and faces, please do not wait to sign up because it's a rare opportunity and we would love to have you. It's so fun. Um, so the, it's, it's within the fun fab drawing club. So you go right to awesomeartschool.com and then you can join the drawing club and it goes, and this is ongoing. And someone asked if I could offer it as a separate class. And I'm going to say no, because you know why? The membership is like, it is a membership. Um, it Like I, I bend and flow according to my students. So like I said, like uh, that Zoom call, they were like asked if I could do these variations for them in lessons. So I'm like, okay. So a lot of times I will change things up based on what my students want. So it's very like uh, flexible. It kind of like ebbs and flows and grows along with whatever my members want. I got lots of members here though too. So if you have questions, they can also, they can also uh, answer them for you. Probably better than I can. Mm. All right. Oh, oh, that's a really good question. I actually already have an expressive profile lesson in the drawing club. Actually already, which is perfect for this. She's like laughing, has like a big laugh smile face. So actually already done, Carrie, already done. Um, all right, let's dive in. Okay, I got um, I got a little bit reprimanded from Jerry's Artorama that I hadn't used their, <laughs> my illustration kit lately. So I'm, everything that I'm working on today is from my illustration kit that I picked out all of these items from uh, from Jerry's Artorama. This is, and this is true. These are things I use every single day anyways. I just, I've never mentioned them, uh, that, they're from, that they're from my kit. So I'm working on Bristol paper. You can work on any paper, like computer paper, totally fine. Bristol paper is actually the hardest to work on in the way that I'm working today. The reason I have Bristol paper in my Jerry's illustration kit is because I use so many markers and markers are like a dream on Bristol. It's like their favorite paper. So that's why I recommend, I pretty much only use Bristol for like a plain piece of paper anyways, or watercolor paper. All right. So do you, let's, here's our reference, which I, you know, I'm not going to stress, a lot of people stress that they don't have the reference, but here's the thing is you're following me, not the reference. So follow my lines. I have the reference and I'm going to guide you. Okay. Step by step. And someone asked if I could break down proportions for you. And the answer is absolutely. Yes, of course. <clears throat> okay. So I'm using pencils from my season uh, drawing pencil set. So I love, um, it's easiest to use a soft pencil if we're going to be doing any shading. So I just dive right on in. I'll probably use my softest ones that I even have, which is like, which goes all the way up to 12B, which is pretty bananas. So I'm using, if you have an 8B, if you have a, literally use whatever you want, but I'm, I think that the softer is the easier for adding shading, which we're also going to get into right now. All right. So you have your piece of paper. And I got to say, I'm not like one of those teachers where I'm just forging ahead. Like, I really expect you to draw with me. Like, you pick up your pencil, get your paper. We're drawing. You guys ready? Let me know in the comments who's drawing. And if you need a minute, if you need a minute to go, if you're like, ah, oh, fine, I'll go get my stuff. Go get your stuff right now. And I will just give you a minute and I'll read the comments. Make sure I didn't miss any questions before I begin, but we're going to start. Okay. All right, I'm geared up. Go get your pencil and your paper. All right, Lisa's in. Yes, I love it. Ellen Goodman, hello. Ellen is all in. Look at all these people. 
Yes, Karen Spam is here. Wendy, yes, Tammy Lee. Love it, love it, love you, Tammy Lee. I'm gonna see you very soon. Um, okay, amazing. All right, and seriously, if you want to get drawing and you're scared or you're not ready, go get your supplies right now. Um, awesome, awesome. <clears throat> the all the faces, everything. Hi, Dorothy. We were just emailing yesterday is in the fun fab drawing club at awesomeartschool.com. There's a little link right there for you. It's so fun. And everything, it's not even there yet, but it's going to be on Sunday. I release all my new lessons on Sundays if you're a club member. So that's Sunday is when you'll get like the official everything. All right. Wonderful. Deb Dalton. Hi, Deb. She says, of course I'm drawing with you. All right. Eddie is getting her supplies. Amazing. Clementine is holding her pencil. Nice. Okay. That is what I like to see. All right. So I will say in case, again, just get another minute. It's easiest for blending on textured paper. So like if you have watercolor paper, that's actually the easiest thing to blend on. And Br Bristol's the hardest. So I'm going to give myself the hardest. All right. We're going to start with just like a lovely oval. Now I have like, a, I'm right-handed. So I tend to tilt my paper and I'm going to draw like 50 ovals. I do it every single time. I always do it the same way. So oh, my pencil's really dark. So I, oh, I usually just kind of like start super light and then I kind of so this is building muscle memory when you do it like a zillion times so I'm gonna just keep doing this and you can do it too okay so we're gonna kind of get in the feel for a paper oh my hand is smudging the lines I'm not stressing about it whatever all right so you're just going to kind of do this with your arm. And I want you to do this every time. I do it every time I draw a face, even though I have drawn eight gajillion faces, I still draw 50. Okay. All right. And the point is that inside one of these, there is the circle for you. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, okay. So. In Cameron Mark's girl's face, she has a very angular face. I'll show you the reference. Here's a bigger one. I laminated it. I'm such a nerd. I actually laminated it. I took it. I just took it to Aruba with me. Do you see how he has these awesome angles? Okay. So we are going to create those awesome angles too, one line at a time. Okay. So I have all this like circle mess, whatever. But in here, there's like the average of all these lines and mine are all kind of the same because I have so much muscle memory because I do faces so much. And the same thing will happen for you. So amongst this mess, take like the average of all your ovals and just start. And we're going to do like a, at the center here, we'll even drop a line. Let's drop our vertical through first. In the middle of your mess, you're going to drop a vertical line all the way through. If you want to use a ruler, you can totally use a ruler. Okay. I'm not moving on till you guys have all done this. So let me know in the comments. Be like circle line drawn. I will wait for you. <clears throat> um, Tara Salento, the Wonder Bundle is not open right now. It's just the it's just the drawing club. So you can work that out with whoever is asking. <laughs> um circle line drawn okay amazing thank you so much done we're all on the same page okay awesome all right so we're gonna like build her super cool angular chin all right so we're at the bottom where that center point we're gonna make like a line mine's gonna be like an inch we're gonna i'm literally gonna make like a little straight line like that i'll make it pretty dark okay it's just a boop. Okay, and then we're going to make like a V. It's like a V shape, only that's the point of the V. Instead of having a V point, we're just going to have a V line at the bottom. So it's just going to be a wide V. And I'm using like my oval to kind of, so I know that it's not like crazy, like out of proportion. So I'm still like landing my top of the line, like in the middle of the mess of all my ovals. So something like that. Okay. So if I was going to do a V, obviously it would like, it should, the V point should land on like my vertical line. Okay. So we've only drawn, we've drawn this one and then we have our little V shape on either side and they're still pretty low. Like, you know, like here's our middle. 
And let's actually stop right now. In the next line, let's do our horizontal line. It should be in the center of your oval, okay? And I just eyeball mine. If you want to measure, knock yourself out, okay? So see how low that V line is right now? It's still pretty low, okay? Awesome. <laughs> Jeanette says, I can remember not too long ago when I used to obsess over this. Now you go for it. Exactly. Ah, and Jeanette says exactly at the same time. I love it. Okay. Awesome. Yay. Bernadette is also joining us too. Okay, cool. So now we're just going to connect this, the top of our V to this horizontal line. And we're just going to like, I'm actually going to follow this lovely curve that I had from my oval mess. Okay. So I'm just going to like I'm following, you know, like the center, whatever, one of those lines from my V up to the, my horizontal. All right. We good? We surviving? No, no catastrophes yet. <laughs> you can use a ruler. You can do whatever you love. Okay. Oh yes, Tara. Good answer. Okay. Um, all right. And you know, before I go any further, I'm actually going to like give her a neck. Why not? We're already down here. So remember how we had our V two seconds ago? There's our V and here's like, here's like the lines where my V went to. So like between the top of our V, you know, like our V lines in the middle of those, we're going to make, give her a neck. Okay. So I'm just going to do a little curved line. I like thin necks. So mine tend to be kind of thin. But that's where you want it to go. You want to go right in the middle of your V line on one side and your V line on the other side. It's like we might as well. We're already here. Why not? Okay. Yes. Sharon Boone says, I am here and drawing. Love it, Sharon. Awesome. 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 All right. Sweet. We got that. We got that. Okay. So now we're going to ignore her at the top of her head for a minute. Okay, so we want to have lines. Her eyes, a, a good whimsical proportion, and Cameron does have this on this girl. So on a realistic face, you have five eyes across. In his face and in my, like, fun fab drawing style, um, And in case you're, like, new to my world, when I refer to my fun fab style, I have a whole series of books called How to Draw Fun Fab Faces, and this is the proportions that I teach in there as well. It, just in case, that Fun Fab you'll hear all the time, like I have a Fun Fab Drawing Club is the name of the drawing club. My Fun Fab Faces Challenge is like, so that's what that is in reference to, in case you are new. You could, my neck is not on a slant, but you can make yours if on a slant if you want to, go for it. So on that horizontal line, we're gonna just put three, ovals in a row and they all their ovals should be the same time i love i'll grab it so you can see it i've been using more and more this with my drawing club students which is funny because i didn't use a template for a hundred years and now i just started to this oval template is super handy but i'm not using it today because i didn't say to so if you don't have a template, which I didn't for years, you're just going to make sure that your eye circles are the same size. So, and you want to start with the one in the middle. Okay. This is super important because this is your spacing. Okay. If your eyes are too close together. Oh my God. You know, you get a phone call in the middle of a live and then it wipes. <laughs> like My whole screen disappears. I'm like, no. <laughs> So you're going to do that, whatever this size is, you want to repeat it. Now he has really big eyes, so they're going to be, see, and look how messy my stuff is. It's messy. Don't, don't, I haven't erased anything yet. Okay. So we have three eyes in a row. Okay. That middle one is our spacer, but see how they go almost to the sides. So you're going to leave a little room and the ends. That's how you know if you're in the right side or not. Okay. Oh my God, Lynn, is it, it's 1.30 a.m. Hi, Lynn. That's really late or early, depending on how you look at it. <clears throat> okay. So here's our three circles. 
All right, so we're gonna line up and do some more circles too. And these, I call these placeholders because they're like holding the place for these other features. All right, so now remember that horizontal line, put your finger on that and then find the, her chin. I made a bone, I made my bonus triangle. Okay, I, I always like to touch them. I don't know why, it helps me find the center better because the middle of this, we need another line and that's her nose line. And I know you might be asking like, well, how come you're not working from the reference right now? And that's because these placeholders are the same for every adult face, male, female, ethnicity. Like they all start the same way. And then you just simply tweak them a little bit up or down, small or whatever. But it's weirdly universal to the human face. So that's why I can forge ahead with confidence. So, and you can make this line go all the way across. If you did, that's fine. That's what I normally do. And then you're going to take that ratio and you're just going to put another line in, which is weirdly right where that line, remember when I was located that line for the help us with the neck, it's actually right where that is. All right. So look at this craziness. We are entering the ugly phase, which is a part of every single face drawing. If you don't see an ugly phase, I think, I feel like you're actually not even doing it right. <laughs> you should definitely have an ugly phase. <clears throat> All right. Um, okay. So now we need to do a little, we're going to do a little oval. I'm going to put my oval uh, right on the line, just like an oval like that. Okay. And then on this last line, this is the mouth. And we're going to do, I just put like a same thing. These are just placeholders. Like, okay, this is where our facial features are going to go. Awesome. Yes. Linda says every single project has an ugly stage for like 90% of the project. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> totally. So fun. Okay. So now this is the part where we get to start like adding in some details. Oh, like, let's put our ears in first. All right. So remember that nose line we just did? Awesome. We're going to put another oval. Well, ears are like just kind of like backwards to C's. Between the eye line and the nose line is the ear. So it's super easy to find. You can just start with like a backwards C here and a backwards C here. Or a, that would be a, actually a regular C. <laughs> but the ears, like see how ni nice and tidy this all is? Mine looks like a robot. Mine looks like an alien. They can be friends. Okay. So we're going to dive in and start fine tuning the eyes. Okay. So his eyes on this girl, on this sassy girl, I'm calling her, are very large. And then they have these gorgeous lids on top with some gorgeous eyelashes. So one thing at a time. We're going to start with the top of the line. So I'm going to start at the bottom corner of this eye okay and i'm just going to do like a diagonal and i'm looking at this reference to make sure i get it right i'm going to do like a do a diagonal like up just like that and i'm going to do the same thing over here i find that building up the eyes together at the same time rather than doing all one and all the other helps make them symmetrical because you can kind of like you have every opportunity to like stop and fix as you go instead of waiting till they're all done now how crazy does she look? Super crazy. All right. No, I see you, Valerie. There's just a lot going on. <laughs> All right. So now we have that and that. Okay. Now we have our oval here. So I'm going to actually come, because her eyes are so big, I'm actually going to come a little bit up over my ovals and just do like a nice roundy line at the top. And then the same thing over here. Now, roundy line, and I'm following my oval shape. I'm letting that guide the shape. Okay, so that's like uh, fine tuning the top of her eyes. There, I love this attitude of that long time Wonder Bundle student. Even when I do mine at the same time, they still look different, but it's all good. Exactly, it's all good. That's the attitude which will lead into the hashtag farts along in a little bit because I need to explain the fart acronym that I use all the time. The first, the F stands for fun, which is, and the A is attitude, which is super important when you're trying to become an artist. You got to chill out <laughs> or else you're screwed. All right, let's do the bottom lash. Okay. So he 
Cameron always leaves like a gap on this girl. So we're not, usually I would, I would start my bottom line from this point and we're not gonna, we're gonna actually like leave a little space there. We're just gonna leave a space. And I love this. He actually has like, instead of just following the bottom lash line, which you totally can, you could absolutely just do that. He actually has this little bend there. I'll do it on this side. So instead of that, he has, he goes like down and then he like comes up. It's almost like a wide V, like the wide V that we did over here. Just stylistic difference. Drawing that to your attention if you want to try it too. So down and then up. It's like a broken bent line instead of just this soup. And when you, and this is why I like to copy faces from other artists because you learn all these little, and I always get permission, you always get these little nuances of how they're creating things. And then you can kind of pull little from here, little from there, little from there. And those all come together to create your style. There's so much we can learn from other artists. And that, you know, they, most people love it. They're like, yes, we love it if you use my faces as a references. All right, so we have that and that. Now we're just gonna um, put a line over. We're gonna make like a parallel line above and now I'm gonna break it. He has a break right here. So a parallel line for, for what I just drew would be that. He just has like a little break in there. So you can leave that break in or you can, leave, you can leave it out either way. But we're doing a literally like a parallel line of just the top. And he has that again, that kind of like stylistic break. No big deal. Notice I have not erased a thing yet. Okay, so now I'm inclined to, there's a lot of different ways we can go, but I'm inclined to, let's polish up the eyes a little bit. We are going to drop in, and this is, is where I find it's very useful to have, like a, I even use the same ellipse template. I'll even use ellipses, even though a pupil is totally circle. I would, it's totally circle. Pupil is a perfect circle. I even use, this is where it's really handy to have a little template, but again, I didn't say to bring it, so I'm, I just chucked it on the floor. <laughs> so I'm not gonna use it. So what you're, what I find is easier to do is you want, see how this is, is cut off by her eyelid? We're gonna draw a full circle, but we're gonna make sure that it's like chopped off, literally, okay? So see that? I'm gonna draw the full circle even though we don't see the full circle. That will help you make sure that her irises are even. This one looks bigger than that one, so you can just fatten it up. That's like a lot bigger than that one. All right, and so now is when I'm gonna start erasing a little bit because we're getting into some fine tuning and I wanna like get rid of that right away because it'll just bother me. So let's erase. We're not going to erase everything and we're not done with our placeholders, but I, I'm going to, I am going to erase like her mid, her third eye. You may now erase <laughs> a little bit and some of this like mumbo jumbo in here that I just created because as much as the ugly stage is 1 million percent normal and going to happen, I don't really want to enjoy wallowing in it forever. All right, so I'm just gonna. Now she looks like a dead. She looks dead right now. <laughs> and this is when I start laughing because faces are always <laughs> called their ugly face. And if you don't laugh, you're gonna cry. <laughs> but look at her. She's like, oh, like literally. That's terrible. But what's gonna sassify her eventually is gonna be her eyebrows. Okay, that's like where all this expression just comes from. So she goes from like that phrase to like hang on, like because of what we're going to do with our eyebrows. So hang tight. It's coming. <laughs> oh. oh, hi, Tanya. Sorry, I'm distracted. I'm teaching. <laughs> so fun. Okay. So we have dead eye, weird looking, dead eye, weird looking. Let's start with those. Let's go start with those sassy eyebrows actually right now. All right. So we did have our vertical. <clears throat> so between this vertical and the eye, whoop, 
I'm just gonna do like another like guideline on either side. That's just the middle of these. That's just the middle point between those. That's where her eyebrows are gonna start actually, okay? And this one, there's quite a little, so we're gonna come up in the air a little bit, okay? And she, this eyebrow is gonna come up to like a little bit past the midway of the eye. And then it's just kind of like turns the corner here. All right. Yeah, zombie girl, exactly. All right. And then we give it a little bit of thickness. So you can just literally do a parallel lines to those. Yeah. And please don't get, don't stop. And be like, see, look there. We got like, you got to, you, you see the ugly stage and then you power through. The only way to get through the ugly stage is to keep drawing. It's your only way. So if you, if you stop, it's going to win. You can't let her win. We got to make her pretty. Okay. And then we have this side. Now, this one is a lot lower. So we're going to start at that same point, but we're going to, meaning at this line, but we're going to keep this one low, low to low to the eye. Okay. And we're going to sweep down and then come up. And you know what else is funny? Is <laughs> that sometimes it the face doesn't look like the other face that you're trying to draw and that is a million percent fine too and i should have started talking about that actually from the get-go that's like super important because the goal is not to be a perfect copy of who you're copying the goal is to learn to see and to draw and to how to make expressive faces so please keep that in mind <clears throat> don't let elmer win hilarious <laughs> Okay, so fun. All right, so we have those and those. Now we're gonna create, so he, Cameron, draws the nose bridge. I sometimes do, I sometimes don't. Like in, this is, weirdly, this is the cover of this book. Like I have almost the same exact lines drawn as he does in here. So sometimes it's nice in this style to have just like a little semblance of a bridge. Now, normally you wouldn't have a line on your face like that, but in this style, it's helpful. Also helps you figure out where your shading is gonna go. So it's literally like, it's always starts from the eyebrow, okay? And then it comes in a little bit, right? And it's almost sometimes it's just like a quick little like dash in. It doesn't have to be a full line. And his is not actually, it's broken as well. Okay, oak. <clears throat> and then let's start in. I really want to zoom in. I can't zoom in. It's driving me crazy. So we have our oval here at the nose. So we're going to do a parentheses on either side. Okay. <clears throat> either side. Just like literally like like a parentheses around a word, right? Boop, boop, parentheses, nose, parentheses. And then we're just gonna put in here, I'm gonna hold it closer so you can see. We're just gonna add two nostrils. They're literally like little tiny ovals here and here. And we're still working within that little oval shape. Okay, no, it can't be your nemesis, there's like, no lines even there to even be mad at. They're hardly even there. All right, now let's do her lips. So her lips, I'm gonna hold this closer so you can see it better. I can't zoom, so I'm gonna bring my picture up to you closer. We're gonna start with a letter V. Now we have our oval there, so that's exactly where we're gonna put it. We're gonna start with a little letter V. Okay, he has kind of a wide V. And then we are going to, it's gonna become the letter M really. <clears throat> M M. And probably the hardest line of this whole drawing is her lip line in the middle. But the way I like to teach it is that you kind of just do this line again. So on that line, you're going to just do the same M shape that we just did for the top lip. And then all of a sudden, it's a little bit demystified. You're like, oh, I just did that. I'm just doing it again. Okay, and then the next line is super important. We need her mouth to go upturned so she doesn't look like a snotty bitch, okay? I mean, we might do a face that looks like that, but that's not our face today. So we're, we're gonna come up, we're gonna come up 
at the corners a little bit. And that all, every time you like increase the top slant of a mouth, you're gonna have more of a positive expression. All right, now we already had our bottom lip here, so we just use it to inform where our lip is gonna go. And Cameron's lip is like flat on the bottom and then it kind of comes up on either side. So it looks a little bit more like Puji. And all of these are like changeable. You can make that bigger by just making it the lip bigger and wider down below, or you can make it thinner by like coming up. So it's very easy to like tweak these. Am I using graphic paper? I'm using Bristol paper. Yes, I'm there. I'm at Bristol. Yep, these live right on my channel. I don't get rid of my live streams. All right, look how much we've done. We've like done almost all the work. All right, cool, cool. Now let's embark on uh, her hair. So when you're doing human hair, um, hair comes always fills up this space and goes up over that oval that we drew, of which I still have 50 ovals, okay? So always make sure you're coming. The biggest mistake people make is they want to like put it on top. You have to like fill in the volume. How wide should the mouth be in relation to the eyes? Um, I don't actually do them in relation to anything. I just make a little old, I just make them a little bit wider than the nose. And it, do, it can vary. There's no like rule of how fat that can be. If you're doing realistic proportions, the outside of the mouth go lines up with the pupils. This is not a realistic face. So you have a ton of leeway. So I just literally make it that big. <laughs> but you can make it wider. You can make it smaller. It just changes the stylistic feature of your caricature that we're drawing. So you're going to come in. You're coming down in. Okay. And then we're going to do... And it, just also depends on how high your oval is. I'm just going to do kind of like halfway down here and we're going to, I'm going to do a curve line and you can change these two, obviously like a curve line from this middle vertical over to the ear and then on this side as well. And then I'm just going to take a step back and kind of look at it and be like, does that look right? Or does that look weird? Sometimes I adjust it. Um, and to help me, with that, I'm gonna erase this vertical. We can actually erase all of the facial guidelines now. But you see how I wait to like the end to erase because those guidelines are super, they're everything. And then people will ask me like, oh, I have smearing. I'm like, it's okay, it's okay. It's just graphite, it's okay. So you're supposed to have smearing. Wait, the whole point at the end is to smear, to get our shading. So we we want smearing. Having smears and shading and blending is much more important than having pristine paper. We don't care about pristine paper. We care about proportions and if our guidelines were correct or not. Okay. All right, so that she was like peril out of her eye. <laughs> Let's fix the peril. All right, so fun, so fun. Okay, so now I can kind of size her up and be like, okay, what's going on with her hair? And I need her a little bit farther away from my face. She's so close to me that I like couldn't see her perspective anymore. Okay. I think that is fine for her air, her hairline. And like I said, remember, the hair needs to come into the oval space, but it also needs to be come outside as well. There's so much volume to human hair that you don't even realize it. So at the top, I'm going to go up over where the oval head, this is her, this is like the top of her head. And I'm going to go up, up above that. And then we're going to do this fun little messy bun. So to do a messy bun, it's actually really fun the way that he does it, he just has like almost just like, um, well, you can start with like a, you can start with a circle. You can actually just keep it as a circle if you want to. And then he kind of has like, he just like sections it using like chunky straight lines, but they curve around you like using this oval circle shape as it's like parameters, if you will. You can literally just 
do something like that. Everybody, your brain kind of fills in like, oh, there's a bun on her head. So it doesn't even really matter what is in there. You could like this, you could literally have a circle and you, your brain is like, oh, she's a little messy bun, how cute. All right, so then all we need to do really is like connect up her bun <laughs> with her head, right? So um, you can, he, I love he, so this is a digital drawing that we're looking at. And obviously we're, we're not working with digital things. So we only have our pencil. So he has, he has, his style is very broken up into like straight lines, which I really like. And again, that's sort of things that you can kind of learn if you're paying close attention. So instead of going like this, which we can totally do, it would be fine. He, just to show you, like he has like, he'll come like out and then and kind of like this, like he breaks it up into lines, which, and the only reason I noticed that kind of like nuancing is when I was trying to draw her with a ruler only. And I actually was like thinking like, how am I gonna draw her hair going around the curve? I realized like, oh, hey, wait a minute. He actually has her rounded head is a series of straight lines. like. No way. So doing these drawing series is so eye-opening because all that, all those little tiny things, it really helps you build up your, your like knowledge, honestly, knowledge block and how, of how much you, what you learn and what to look for, what to use, what to leave out. And, you know, sometimes like every project is, is a learning thing, right? So like some things we're like, oh, I'm never doing hair like that again. That was like a nightmare. Or, but like, you know, it's like, that's also why we do variations of each one. Because every every chance is a is a every every face is an opportunity to learn just so much more and to practice. All right, so we could do the other side. We can do a right series of straight lines, or you can just connect it up with a circle. I actually I don't think I actually went up out enough. There really is a lot of volume, so I'm gonna actually even make it even bigger. And. <laughs> And now it's bothering me that that line was so perfect when I have all these straight lines up here. Uh, and also my center was off a little bit. So I'm actually going to like kind of continue with that weird segmented feeling because I like that look a lot. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to do it down here again. Now I'm finally going to erase all of this head circles. But that is super how you should do it. Like when you're doing her hair of any hairstyle, you want to make sure the hairline is down into the face oval and up and over that oval. That's why I always leave those guidelines in for myself to make sure I'm going up high enough and coming down low enough. <clears throat> yeah, and don't, I have to say, I can't figure out why my eyebrows don't look skeptical. So here's the point where you actually do not look at your face yet. Like we are not done. So you know, you shouldn't be like analyzing the expression or seeing if you're successful. We're not there yet. So you actually like, don't look at it yet. I know that sounds really weird, but like literally don't look at it yet until we're more done. And then we can tweak it at the end. We're still building and shaping. We haven't put the pupils in. We haven't put the eyelashes in. Sometimes... It's she's they look so bad until you just pop the eyelashes on and then you're like, oh, there she is. <laughs> it's like the last stroke, like literally. So don't don't even don't even worry about that. You got nothing to worry about, my friend. OK, I'm not trying to nitpick you, but I think everybody falls into that. I'm like, no, nope, no, nope, we're not even at the point. I'm going to have a drink of water. I'm not going to look at her. Because it's way too easy to start nitpicking yourself. And we have more work to do. OK. So we have blah, 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 we have blah, blah, blah. All right, let's like fine tune her ears. We haven't even done anything with her ears yet. So we're gonna now just slowly. So you do all your big strokes first, okay? And then you start honing in on the details and then we'll do the shading, which is actually the funnest, fastest, quickest, <laughs> quickest part. Bryn says it's a fine mess, I love it. And Bryn saying that is hilarious because Bryn is like one of the most talented artists that I know. And so she's saying that like, hello ugly, like, this is just the phase that you do that. So yeah. Yeah. Valerie says my faces are always in the ugly stage and, until I finish eyelashes. Yeah. 
it's it's super normal to like have it take the whole drawing session for it to come together and you're not doing anything wrong that is the norm so and the more you realize that the more less stress you're about it you are about it so just telling you you're all, it's all good i promise i mean look at her she, mine looks crazy but she'll come together okay so let's like start getting some details going let's I'm, i really want to fix her ears i love his ears the same way that his hair is made up of straight lines, his ears kind of are too a little bit. So like, I'm just gonna erase a little. This eraser is not as good as my vanish eraser. It's the bomb. Also in my Jerry's kit, Jerry's aroma. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna come, instead of having it just be like a C, I'm gonna come, I love how he comes like up and then it almost like is a straight line at the top so it's like straight line, straight line, and then curved line, and then almost like a straight line. So it just has a little bit more personality than just like our, er, but there's nothing wrong with a er ear either. And then I'm gonna come over here and kind of do the same thing. So it's like straight line, straight line, curved. He actually, this one is like, he has like more. Oh, and look at mine aren't even in the same size. <laughs> I will fix that. And if you're not sure where you are, draw a line so you know if you're matching. I'm drawing a line right through her face because that's more important than keeping my paper perfect and white and shiny. Okay, so every ear. And then I like his ear details. He does a parallel line. Let me get my bucket back up here. He does another little parallel line to these ones, okay? And it's just so subtle. So it just comes like it, this, and then it just fades. But even having that one extra line makes it like more realistic looking. Not that we're doing that, but it's really easy to just pop in an extra line and have a big effect. So I'm, I'm all for it. You have that and that. And again, my ears aren't the same size or shape. Don't care. Um, and then I love, I do love this line, which is from the face, you come out and it's like a, it's just like a, it's really like a sideways V, like a triangle on either side. And then let's pop on some earrings. Let's do some earrings. I'm going to give my girl like big earrings, big hoops, make some earrings. Let's do it. Do whatever you want. Do big, do little. Maybe she has things dangling off of her earrings. I don't know. Give her some earrings, people. Oh, there is a drawing tomorrow for a giveaway, by the way. If you do this drawing and you post it in my Facebook group, you're entered to win uh, any one of my art books or a pencil pouch. I forgot all about the giveaways are tomorrow. I do them every single month in my Facebook group. So you can totally do that. You just need to use the hashtag. If you're on YouTube, you would you can use um, you can use Karen's YouTube or Fart Along. Fart, the F is for Facebook and also fun. Just so you know. The difference okay she's coming together super fast let's get let's get her like a some sort of a well mark has like a crew neck so that's fine so i'm just gonna like do a swoopy line to connect her neck and then i'll just add a little bit of thickness and do another swoopy line here and here okay and then i literally can like just shoot off lines on either side for her shoulders okay cool let's put her let's put her some let's go work on her eyes a bit she has we have some work to do up here so actually cameron's eyes are actually all filled in like totally black with just a little bit of white eye shine if you notice which and then they're just a little bit faded at the bottoms we could totally try that I haven't even ever tried that before. So like, let's try it. Um, so I'm gonna leave a little bit of a space. I'm gonna leave like a little rectangle. Can you see that? See how I like drew myself a rectangle to remind myself like, don't go there. And then I'm gonna, I'm actually just gonna fill this in gently. I've never, I'm so interested to see what that, oh, look at it, it's already there. I'm just gonna fill that in and see if it works. I'm gonna use my blending stump in a minute too. Try something new, don't hate it, cool. Oh, and I just banged my head on my camera. Oh, oh here are the shoulders. The shoulders are just literally burp, burp on either side. 
with two parallel lines curved at the bottom of the neck. <laughs> oh, thank you, Tara. Yes. The, the, I love, yeah, I'll take oh, just a moment. Yeah, far is, is, far is my secret recipe, it really is, for um, creating awesome artists over at Awesome Art School. Thank you, Tara. This is exactly right. Fart stands for fun, attitude, repetition, and technique. Yes. Yeah, so fun is always first because if you're not having fun, what the hell is the point? And you're never going to come back for more if you're not having fun. So that's like essential. Um, so this is the farts along hashtag that will um, enter you to win. Um, yeah. And then attitude is the same thing, which we've already talked about. It's like, this is, it's a nightmare forever. It's all good. Like it'll come out. I promise. Um, and the repetition obviously is doing something over and over again. Right. And then techniques, believe it or not, as ridiculous as I am, I am teaching you techniques along the way. You may just not realize it. Um, so that's how we make awesome artists at awesomeartschool.com. Yeah. Oh, the sound effects. I'm so glad. I know I can't not do it. I just haven't even, I haven't even started singing yet, actually. All right. We're so close. We're so close to being done. All right. So now let's like, um, we need to add a little, like, we need to judge her eyes a little so they're very unsexy right now. So she does have a beautiful top lip, lip, eyelid. Eyelid is not a lip, an eyelid. So I'm going to just, with my pencil, like thicken up the line, the top eyelid, literally just going to draw it. And then I'm going to make her a wing. Okay. Cause I don't, I am not a digital artist. I don't have what he has, but it looks like it's just drawn like a, it's like a wing that's just kind of drawn like that. So I just fattened up the top line and then I just went fring off the side and you can make that as big as you want. And then I'm just going to go Bloink, bloink, and make maybe maybe a couple more. And then on the bottom, he looks like he has a, a, he has like a couple of lines there too. So it's just like thicker on the top and the bottom on the edges, like makeup. And then his eyelashes are actually straight, which I've never even tried doing like a real straight eyelash. It's like already she looks good. And it was like two seconds of the eye thing. <clears throat> Wendy says, yeah, I'm farting. Yeah, you are, Wendy. And you're already an awesome artist because of it. Oh, I know, it's an inside joke. It's always awkward letting outsiders know about it, but it's a thing. It works. All right, so we're going to do the same thing on this side, okay? So we're just going to fatten up that. I'm just going to literally scribble to fatten up the top of her lid. Okay, and then we're going to make her wing on this side. And then we can do a couple bonus lashes up there. And if like my eyes don't even match, so I'm gonna like just take a second and make them match a little bit. And then the same thing on our bottom lid. It's like there's just a little bit fatter, like as if she had some makeup on. Oh, I'm trying to do my straight lashes. It's so awkward. I've never done that before. All right, so she, look at how pretty she's getting. It's all about the lashes. Okay, and then her eyebrows like have no lines in them. So I'm just gonna literally like use straight lines and fill in. And this is where having a soft pencil is so handy because it's so thick, your lines are fat already. It's just like easy. It's like you don't even have to draw that much. It just fills it all in. Oh, see, now she's cute. Do you see how she went from being like alien to like sassy? It's, it's, it's the sum of all the teeny tiny parts. All right, now we need to help her hair. Her hair is atrocious. And what I love about Cameron is he has these little like wispy bits. So I actually sometimes will start with the wispy bits instead of adding them afterwards. And you can't be afraid to like go into your drawing. So like, like the reason that they're so effective is that like they like kind of, they're like naughty. They go like into the eye area, which can be terrifying, but it's also what makes it look more like natural. So like you like go in to places you're not supposed to go with hair. And he has these little wispies here too, like the top of her ears. So I'm literally like starting and then I'm just pulling, like I'm pulling and making like quick pulling motions to make them look kind of wispy. We can have some up here too, where you're like just zooming. So hair, anything that grows, 
grass, trees, hair. You always want to start at the place where it grows and then whip out from there. So if her hair is in a bun and it's pulled, you're going to always start really for hair. You always start at the, at the, at the part or the base where it's coming out of, which in this case, you're all literally draw two lines, right? And you're coming out now again, he just these weird, like straight lines. So you can do that, or you can just simply put in some curved lines, but just putting in a few lines is really all you need. Now, again, he's a digital artist, so he's not using the same supplies as we are. So he has these areas up here, which are a little bit darker. So we could if we wanted to, although I really don't think it's necessary. We could take a minute and like make some dark areas here, but it's actually a little bit weird in graphite but you could, but we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to, to shade and blend her too. But I'm just showing you like, if we were gonna be super copying him and wanna make it look the same, he has these really dark kind of like root and tip areas, but it looks, it looks a little weird in graphite, I'm not gonna lie. So I'll leave it up to you if you do this part or not. I probably wouldn't, but here we are. <laughs> I'll show you anyways. Yeah, so art supplies is a is a big factor as well. People a lot of times will be like, I don't know how to get that glow. And I'm like, you can't because you're not, it's not, it's like a digital effect that you literally can't with traditional materials. So it just depends. And in the meantime, I'm look at me, I'm smudging this whole side with my hand. Like, just let it go. Like, don't worry about it. We'll clean her up, I promise. All right, so it's like he has like a little bit of shading on the sides and at the top, and then it's sort of left alone in the middle. But look at how much more done she looks already. So crazy. And then he has kind of the same bits up here in the bun where it's like, um, he has some like directional lines. It's cause it's like the hair is kind of wrapping this way. I did my lines kind of incorrectly. But you can do kind of the same thing where you have just some thicker parts just so your brain like knows like, hey, that's hair and it's going in that direction. That's really all that this means. And he's got these cute little wispy chunks kind of like poking here and there. Right. That's just straight lines, straight lines. No, no magic there. And then look how I keep wanting to zoom. My zoom is usually up here. My camera is like driving me crazy. There's nothing there. Um, so look how cute she came together. I didn't do anything. I just kept plodding along. You just got to. That's why I'm like, don't judge your drawing until you're done. And even then, don't draw your drawing. Like, it is what it is. All right. So the drawing part is done. We're going to move on to the mooshing part, which is my favorite, but I still have guidelines in here that I left in. So I'm finally going to actually take a minute to erase, but please note like how long I leave them in there. I think people realize like guidelines are wrong or bad. I'm like guidelines are everything. They're everything. So leave them in forever. They should be the last to go or only when you know you're done with a part and then you can get rid of them but like she still even has like she still has like her oval circle in her like in her eyes I'm actually just gonna leave it there like it adds more dimension kind of um and then if this if this is all smudging like you do this and you're smudging it it's kind of just adds to the yumminess or you could just take an eraser and like erase it out erase it back to the white of the paper but i like it i like a mooshed paper okay are you guys ready for some shading and it actually doesn't i actually still see my guidelines i like it kind of looks like artsy fartsy i don't mind it at all all right let's talk about shading and also what happens if you don't have a blending stump so if you don't have a blending stump use your finger just use your finger a lot of people you can use a q-tip it works super well you can also use like a little bit of toilet paper, tissue paper. I, I'm going to have a hard time probably the most of you because I'm working on Bristol, which is actually the hardest thing to shade. 
because it's so smooth. So what I probably will do, I'm doing it right now to show you, is I will just make like a puddle. This is not a wet medium, but I'm going to make like a patch of the soft graphite. So this is my 12B from my Jerry's art kit, Jerry's. All right. And then I have this blending stump, which I only use on its sides. Okay. So you won't ever see me using a blending stump like a pencil. I use it only on this flat side of its side because you don't want to be writing with it. You want to be mooshing with it. All my students are like, oh, Jesus, here's she's off on her mooshing tangent. But you literally are just smooshing your graphite. That's all that blending is. OK, so see how awesome that is. It's when you lose the you lose that that sharp edge on your paper, which is why we don't ever use our tips of our blending stems. We're only going to use the side to moosh. OK, which size blending stump do you prefer? I don't have a preference. I have I just grab whichever one is the dirtiest. I do a big one for a big size drawing and I do a little one for a little size drawing. There's no magic to it. Um, yes, here we go. Mooshing goddess in the room. Yes, let's do it. Okay, so let's get fancy with shading, shall we? Okay, so here's a little cheat in case you haven't done shading before. All right, and by the way, my drawing club members, drawing club is open today and tomorrow. You get this book for free when you sign. You actually get like five books for free. This is one of them. This is my Skin Tone Secrets book. And in it, you get um, all the information you need to know about light source and shading. So this book is about markers, but we can use it. I use it for all sorts of mediums. Okay. So we have this little diagram uh, and the book is broken up into three sections, depending on your light source. There's more than three ways to shade, but I wanted to, these are my favorite ways to shade. So I'm just going to randomly pick one. So let's do this, this one. So we have the light source is coming from the left and then it's shaded on the right. Super fun. That's on page 35. Anybody wants to follow along. So remember, I just, ma I just made my big yummy pile. So if you haven't done this, do it now. Seriously, grab a pencil, any pencil you have, scribble it down on a piece of paper. Especially if you don't have, if you're not working with a soft pencil, then you really need to do this. Um, you get the ebook for that. Oh, if you sign up for the, um, what is the drawing club? It is my fun fab drawing club at awesomeartschool.com. And today is day one of a whole series of faces and figures. We're doing expressive faces for 10 lessons. And then we're doing 10 figures that go along with those. So if you want to continue on with the whole series with me, then you can join today at awesomeartschool.com and it's called the fun fab drawing club and it's for it's named after my fun fab book series which is how to draw fun fab faces i have a lot of books that's just some some of them mine looks bored or maybe sad how am i not getting this so two things that you want to keep your eyes peeled for one Make sure her lips are turned up at the bottom. That's super important. You have to have this. You have to have these, the end, the lines of her mouth literally have to go up on either side. Can you check that for me? They have to go up. Even if the middle is straight and not like this fancy shape that we have, they have to go up, up, up sides. Oh, you know what I forgot? Her little adorable dimples. Oh my God. Which we can actually do with a blending stump as well. They're right on that. They're right like lined up with the bottom of her ears. They're a little lower on his actually. And I'm just going to do two little burp burp. So yeah, corners have to go up. And this eyebrow has to be way up here in the sky. And this one is down. Okay, but literally that mouth, it's crazy because those lines are like this big. But if they are not going up, your face will not look happy. Okay. All right. So where were we? Mooshing. So grab your grab your blending stump. The dirtier, the better. 
and we're gonna shade on the right side. So we're, our light source is this way. And so this side gets to be dark, which is super fun and dramatic. All right, so all along her hair, I remember I told you I'm only working on the side. I'm using the side of my blending stump. Now this line isn't even like, it doesn't even like exist. It's so light. I'm gonna just take a minute and make that a little bit darker so we can actually see it. And if we wanna get super fancy, which we do, we're gonna give this hair a shade too. Oh my God. Now you can even give it a space. Look at how realistic this will look. Cause it's like off of her, oh my fancy pants. Look at that. Now I'm still using the side of my blending stump. Okay, so that looks so 3D that we just did that. <clears throat> Isn't the light in the right side of her eyes? Um, we're not even worried about our eyes right now. We're just gonna go all around her face. Whoop. All right, and then we are going to, I'm using the side of my blending stick, okay? And I'm going to moosh my graphite lovingly all around her eye, but also up to that, that nose bridge line. Remember that nose bridge line? Okay, look at all this mooshing. This is my favorite part. It's like very meditative. Now I'm gonna actually come all the way and I'm also gonna moosh the bottom of her nose. You can barely even see. It's because I'm working on graphite. I am um, Bristol, sorry. And I'm even going to shade under her nose, between her nose and her mouth. Now I'm even going to, I'm just going to keep going with this. Since this is not in color, I'm actually going to just add, I'm just going to moosh the graphite all in her lips, which kind of gives them the illusion of color, like they're colored in. Okay, look how fancy we are, so fun. Okay, now we're gonna pretend there's like a, a ball in the middle of her, ch of her chin. You can even put your finger there and we're gonna go like around it. Okay, see how it leaves it open? Oh, that, I'm like, what is that? It's her dimple. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna take my blending some and actually like actually moosh her dimple a little bit. Now that's super like dark. So this is my favorite trick. I take my favorite vanish eraser, included in the kit, and I actually pounce. You can pounce it. It's a really soft eraser. If you pounce it, it will like pick it up so it doesn't quite like eradicate it, but you're kind of leaving some behind still. Oh, you're so welcome learning how to smoosh. <clears throat> um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, okay, let's pick up around this eye. So I'm gonna kind of skirt my blending stump around the eye, up around the eye this way. Now, if you wanna get fancy, you can actually leave a little pocket white. It's a little confusing, she has hair going there too. But this, like this part can, I can't, oh, it's backwards, that's so weird. Like this part can stay lit. If you wanna get a super fancy. And then you can, again, I'm just using the side of my blending stump and coming and doing the side of her base. And you can just leave this open if you want to. And then I'm even gonna come in here and do the inside of her ear. So fun. Okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing. The whole right side of her neck is gonna get shaded too. So, But I'm gonna start up here. It's almost like I need to touch graphite wherever I can to get it to move where I want it to go. So I'm gonna like jab my blending stump into this little corner. Be like, thank you very much, Graphite. I need to borrow you for a second. We're going this way. And then we're going to come and do this side of her neck. And same thing. I'm like running out because Bl Bristol is such hard paper. There's like no texture on it whatsoever. So I have to like really work to get my blending stump dirty enough to moosh it in all the places I need it to go. If that makes sense. All right. 
And so this is why I don't mind smudging because it's like the whole thing kind of ends up being smudging too. What's the best worst paper for smooshing graphite? That's a really good question. Um, there isn't really a best. It's just that it will behave differently. So a cold press watercolor paper is the easiest. So I was working, um, I was working in this journal. I just went to Aruba with some girlfriends and I took my laminated coffee along with me because I wanted to show to my drawing club members like all the different variations that you can do just like if you're sitting around with your sketchbook and the first one I did was this is on grab this is watercolor paper which is cold press which is like the easiest to smoosh because there's texture in it and like I'm a mixed media artist so I have a ton of this laying around so this is like the easiest thing in the whole world it's like because when you're drawing with a soft pencil already for the texture, the texture of the paper is kind of like breaking down the graphite already for you. So when you go to moosh it, it's like already been deposited all over your page, if that, if that makes sense. And this is Bristol, which is like non-porous. That's why it's so amazing for alcohol markers. Need a, need a, need a non-porous surface to really be able to mingle, uh, which is why it's so hard because it's like, trying to moosh on like glass because there's no texture at all. So all of the, all of the like graphite comes from like having to pick it up like kind of before I even get there and then putting it around. That's also why people say like, I can't clean my blending stumps. I'm like, good, why would you ever want to clean blending stump? It doesn't work. So you want a nice dirty blending stump all the time because um, that's what, that's where the magic comes from. So that's a really great question. So just that. So the more texture, easier mooshing just is the short and sweet answer to that question. So I'm going to get fancy and I'm going to give this hair like a shadow line too. Because remember, if the light source is coming this way, then this would actually cast a shadow as well. And see, I still don't use the tip. Okay, so it's like shadow. Oh my God, we are so fancy. And then I kind of, when even when the light source is this way, the eyes are still set back in your head. So I still do like to add a little bit of shading around this, the other eye, even though the shading is primarily on this side. Oh, whoa, see how dark that was? Because I had just mooshed it. So we have like a little bit on the left. And then like tons and tons on the right and this cool little shadowy situation there. Now, if you want to like also like her hair is a little weird because I those weird little graphite triangles. So you can also just come up here. And sometimes I will just spread this all around just using the side, just smear, smear it because it just gives the like impression of like this is colored hair. Same thing up here, just so it's not like white. It's also fun to do that because you can also then come back with an eraser and like put in some highlights. So that's another thing. So you can kind of carve highlights in and then you can moosh shadows in as well. So you can go either way. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do, I always save the, the eyes for last, is the top of her eyes are, are always shaded because their eyelid is and their eyelashes are casting a shadow down. I keep wanting to zoom in. It's driving me bananas. So what we do is this also helps if you have like a very startled expression. It, this helps a ton is you always have a shadow across the whole top. And while I'm here, I'm also going to mush in all that graphite that I had filled in already. And this, this always, it always gets shaded, the tops of the eyes. And we left that one sparkle. The eye sparkles can be anywhere. They just have to be the same on both sides. That's the only rule for the art eye sparkle. So whatever you do on one side, you do on the left side. Now I thought when I was looking at his eyes, he had like a little bit of where, oh, here we go. He has like, the white white part in there and then this is like a little bit lighter so i'm gonna take an eraser and like can i dry that oh yeah like erase out a little bit of it anytime you have like a little bit of variation in the eyes it's always nice and again just make sure they match this one is a lot darker than this one 
And then if you want to really pack a punch, use like a white paint pen. This is my favorite freaking product. This is a Copic opaque white and it's like a nail polish applicator. And then you can always punch up your whites with that. Even on your graphite drawings, you can use that to like give us true sparkle or add like another sparkle. So whatever, like I just did a sweep on, <laughs> so drippy. If I sweep on the left, I need to sweep on the right. Same thing. I'm sweeping on the right, I need to do the same thing. So whatever you decide you want to do for eye sparkles, just make sure you do evenly on both sides. Oh, and then let's just help her mouth out a little bit. We'll make it a little bit more fancy and then we'll be done. So the mouth, the upper lip is always darker. So I'm going to take my pencil and actually like color that in with my graphite. Just a little bit. So already it looks like a little bit more three-dimensional. And then on the sides, well, actually, you can use your blending stump for this. So I'm actually going to go down a size in my blending stump. You can actually grab, um, see, I'm picking it up. And then the, I usually pull like the, pull like the corners of the bottom lip. I might accentuate a little bit and that makes it her lip kind of be pooji. A little bit more three-dimensional. And then there's usually a little, there's usually like a little highlight on the bottom lip too, which you can erase out. You can just use an eraser to erase, erase it out or you can use a little white highlighter or whatnot. So there's so many different layers, but I feel like that's, we've covered so much that I don't want to overdo it. Her nose looks a little flat too. You can always, um, sometimes I like to almost like even just do that one little thing. I just took my blending some and I just like almost like started to make a circle, right? And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I can envision like the little round bump on her nose. It's like all you need to do, just boop, and that's it. All right. Yeah. Okay. How often do I go live? Totally depends. <laughs> All right. So do we have any questions? Um, like I said, this Sunday, if you guys want to continue the challenge. This was week one. So if you did it today, you can check off one on your sheet. So that is one is done, which is draw the face along with Karen. Then if you want to do one, two, three, four of your own variations, I'm going to teach you at least two more. These lessons are already done. They're being edited right now. So we have our My Fun Fab variations where we're doing different color, in color, with glasses. <laughs> and then I teach you how to do it on tone paper with just a ruler and templates. We have so much fun at the drawing club. It's a little redonkulous. Um, and then you can, and then we're going to be doing her figure as well. So I'm adding figures to all the faces that we're doing in the challenge series to make sure, um, make sure we get in some figure practice too. And I'm teaching a lot of different ways to draw figures. But the first one is going to be the nine heads method, which is much more of a fashion illustration approach. Um, so it's a lot. It's a lot of, it's a lot of education. It's a lot of drawing. And that is, if you want to join us, you can, but it has to be today or tomorrow. And it's, the link is right there. Awesomeartschool.com. And you want to look for the Fun Fab Drawing Club. That's where all the, um, that's where all the party starts. No, Cheryl, this doesn't, um, Cheryl is a Fun Fab Drawing Club member already. This will all be in Sunday when it opens up. I'll have the replay there for this. Although the replays live on my channels and on Facebook. I don't like ever delete a replay. Um, but these other lessons and the packet you'll all get on Sunday. Yeah. For you and whoever signs up, if they want to join. Yeah. Sunday. Yes. Linda, you drew along today? Yes, my friend. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, Angela, this, yeah, the replays just stay right. Same link that you use to join will be the link that you join to get back. I don't, I don't take down my replays um, so much. You're so very welcome. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Oh, and don't forget, you can, 
if you want to be entered into the giveaway, you can just post a picture and post it to my Facebook group. Yeah, the hashtag is fart along. It's fart along. Or Karen's YouTube if you're coming from YouTube. If you're on Facebook, you want to post um, fart along. <laughs> hashtag fart along. And if you are coming from um, YouTube, put Karen's YouTube. And they'll both enter you for the same prize. I like to, I pick a lot of winners. I think we will have six winners this time, which is a lot. So my drawing club members also get entered to win. I'm putting the link to my Facebook group. So the giveaway is only in my Facebook group. It's just like one-stop shop where we all hang out. So I'm putting the link right. Oh crap. I just did. I just actually, that's, I forgot the S it's groups. <laughs> that's the wrong link. If you go to Facebook, search for Awesome Art School as the group. There is an Awesome Art School Facebook page. It's like a kid. It's like a 15-year-old kid. That's not me. Um, it's This is our group is Awesome Art School. Awesome. I can't spell Awesome Art School. And Awesome Art School is also where you go to sign up for the Fun Fab Drawing Club. Um, yeah. Yes, it's the Fun Fab Drawing Club. It's like a pink icon when you go to Awesome Arts. It's the very first classroom that you can sign up for. So that's what we're going to be working on. We just finished drawing the Decades classroom. So the Fun Fair Drawing Club is actually comprised of a huge number of classrooms. Um, and it's all year long. So I just finished. We did drawing the Decades for like a year, I think. And I just finished. We just finished the 1960s. We did the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. So after this whole series, it's just going to take us a while because we have all these expressions, way more expressions coming and figures. Um, and my book will come out. And then we're going to return to the Decades. We have to do the 70s and 80s. And then we're going to go. I think I'm going to stop after that. We're going to do a steampunk classroom because there's been so many requests to do steampunks. And that's the thing, too, is like I'm very close with my drawing, my club members. So like they, we also kind of work together to decide what we're going to work on next. It's not just me. Um, we do monthly Zooms, too. You get like free books when you sign up um, to help you track, keep track of everything. Yeah, you can cancel absolutely anytime. There's no contract. No, the replays are not paid. You can watch the replays on YouTube or on Facebook. I know, steampunk is super fun. So I'm looking forward to that, yeah. Yeah, and this lesson is totally free, totally fun. I just wanted people who want to join us to have the chance to because I, oh, my doors are always closed. We like to keep the community like kind of small so we don't have too many people and we can make sure everybody gets what they need but things like this like I feel really bad if we like we're like you can't join my I feel mean so I'm like if like, we're about to launch into this whole long series and you guys want to come and join us we would love to have you like but now he's got to come we're starting so come on in if you want to oh you're the best I know Linda is like a huge Linda I know we talk every week on zoom like because she's in all my clubs so it's a very tight-knit community we really get to know each other uh, and we have a ton of fun we really do but you are all invited if you would like to oh good Tammy posted yay awesome yeah it's super fun <laughs> See, mine looks more like skeptical than she looks sassy. But it's not a boring expression, right? Like something always comes about it. <laughs> mine is lopsided. Who cares? It's all good. Um, what time tomorrow? I'm not sure what you mean for tomorrow, Deb. Nothing is happening tomorrow. Oh, what time do doors close? I don't know. Join, don't wait till tomorrow because I'm not sure. Um, but the, the replays live on on Facebook. They live on on YouTube. They're not going um, so for free books, let me show you the books that you actually get. Oh, I can't. <laughs> oh, I can't find it. Oh, that's so annoying. So you get a giant work. If you join annually, you get two months free and you get a giant workbook that goes along with all the classrooms and you get a guide that helps you like navigate your membership. And then you get four other eBooks. You get a cheat sheet books. I have a ton of cheat sheets. Um, I have like 30 and some of them are over 30 pages. So I have two books. So you get those. 
Um, everybody gets the digital form of all the books. I'm missing so many things. I can't even remember. <laughs> There's so many things. Yes, the live giveaway is tomorrow. Oh, what time is the giveaway tomorrow? That's a really good question. Let me find that out right now. I have so much going on. My oldest is moving out tomorrow and flying with my cat. So we've been like at the vet getting health certificates and like, oh my God, we have to catch like a flight. I'm like a little overwhelmed. Um, so tomorrow, let me just look at my calendar. Let's say, let's say 3.30 Eastern time. Cause then Max will be home from school and so will Billy. Yes, 3.30. 3.30 is the giveaway tomorrow. So you have until 3.30 to post. Um, and then Dorothy, to answer your question too. So yeah, if you do it yearly, you do get two free books. But also, um, if you renew, then I have all this swag. I, we have like tote bags and t-shirts and all sorts of things. So you can choose uh, pencil pouches. I have like 17 pencil pouches designs and they're, they're like massive. You can pick those. And for the giveaway tomorrow too, we are, I'm giving away pencil pouches, all my books. Um, for club members, we have every month, you can pick anything from my Etsy shop. So hoodies, t-shirts, totes, pencil pouches, art book, anything. That's every month we do that. You're very welcome. The hashtag is fart along. I know it's very mature. Fart along because fart stands for fun tag to be entered to win this is for fun attitude repetition techniques and if you do all of those things you will have success so it farts is usually what i'm teaching <laughs> it is so fun uh there is no coupon code you just come on in join Oh, I know. Farts are funny every single time. It's kind of bizarre. <clears throat> yep, yep, yep. Farting is fun, Cheryl Torres. Uh, Cheryl is another member who I get to see every month who hangs out with us and I know very well. So I love it. Look at all these lovely ladies joining in. Yes, it's not based on achievement, the giveaways. It's completely random. You just have to, you could like have a chicken scratch drawing from today. And if you, as long as I know you are in here having fun with us that's all you need to that's all you need to win to be entered to win love it oh yay i'm glad you had fun Bryn confetti that's awesome all right any other questions yeah everything oh good i'm glad yeah it's easy to get like really nervous and uptight especially with drawing for some reason more so than other um, than other mediums I find, which is funny because it's actually the easiest one to like correct and to change as well. You know what I mean? So yeah, so here's what we're learning on Sunday. And then our funny, our funny ruler challenge. I, really, I want to do everything with that challenge. It's so ridiculous. Yeah, it's so, so Ellen, uh, they're all going to look different. That's the funniest thing. If you go see all these posts in the Facebook group, everyone's looks different from each other. It's super interesting. <clears throat> so that, and that doesn't matter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like mine doesn't look the same as Cameron's. I don't, I don't lose any sleepover about it. Oh, I'm so glad. Heidi says that she hasn't drawn anything in months. And this was awesome. That is great. Yeah, I'm super. Oh, hi, Stacy. I hope you're feeling better. I'm so sorry for your loss. I saw your post in the Facebook group. I'm so happy that you're here and I'm glad that you'll be joining in. Art is like the best hug for the soul that I could think of. So thinking of you, girl, I'm really sorry for your loss. <clears throat> um, it is the Fun Fab Drawing Club. So if you, if you want to join that today on email, oh, on email, on Sunday, I email uh, all my club members and I literally like send the lessons out then. So I'll just have a link. If, when you join the Fun Fab Drawing Club today, you'll get an email that has like a tour in it so you can learn your way around and how to log in um, and kind of get familiarized with it. And then on Sunday, I have new lessons come out on Sundays, uh, every other Sunday, because I have some people um, who are in all of my clubs, I have three art clubs. And so that way they can have a little bit easier pace. They're not like frantic having new lessons every single week. So it's a nice pace. So for drawing club, it's every other week is our cadence. It works out very nice. <clears throat> oh, good. So, so fun. Oh, good. I'm so glad. 
Oh, that's so funny. My my maiden name is Duval, D-U-V-E-L. So every time I see Duval, I'm always like, oh, are we distantly related? Maybe. <laughs> awesome. I'm so glad that makes me that makes my day. Um, you put your pics to, from today in the Facebook group. So just search Awesome Art School in Facebook groups and come on and join. Oh my God. Thank you for I'm so glad you think so. We work really hard to make sure that people can get around in there. Um, how did I put this face on a fashion illustration girl? Um, I just used a, a software called Canva and like stuck her face on there. It was actually hard. I had to really get the proportions. Like it took me a while to like size it up. This is a coffee, copy free. This is a copyright free image. And this is the face we did today, which I had permission to use from Cameron Mark. And so I had to put them together. <laughs> which is what I'm going to do for all of them. And then we'll learn how to draw them. And each week we'll, or each lesson will have a different way to learn how to draw figures. Cause there's a lot of different ways that you can draw figures. <clears throat> oh, Shirley ran out of room for the bun. I know that's super normal, Shirley. That's okay. But now, you know, for next time to like, Oh God, make sure I have room for the bun. Right. So yeah, all things like that you can take away from each lesson. <clears throat> Oh, good, Angela. You are so welcome. I do try to make every project as easy and fun as possible. Like that is my goal is fun again, because otherwise, like what is the point? <clears throat> oh, I got your Jeanette. I got your your note and I just saw that. Let me just make sure I see all these. <clears throat> Art is so healing. I know. Oh, good. I don't know who this is, but I am thrilled to have you. It's it's so much fun. It's this, but all the time. <laughs> Super fun. Um, oh, yay. Oh, I'm so excited. Coming back, staying for another year. I love that. Make sure you email me so you can get some swag. Awesome. Yes, watercolor paper does smudge very easily. Yep, I was talking about that earlier. Oh. I love that. Thank you, Stacy. Yeah, so a lot, you might be hearing a lot of people talk about the Wonder Bundle. That's for people who are in all of the clubs and everyone who joins one always has the option to uh, to join the Wonder Bundle. Once, once you're in our world, it's pretty easy to stay in our world. It's just hard. I usually, I have to, doors are closed all the time because we just like our little community to stay little. Um, yes, one of my admins will approve your request, yes. Jeanette will be on that today for sure, for sure. Awesome. Yep, we'll get to all of your submissions. The giveaway's tomorrow at 3.30, so you have plenty of time to post, I promise. Um, let's see, is there any trick to getting the erased oval to actually erase? I have some lines that won't go through. Yeah, so this is, a lot of people get really obsessed with that. Um, I, well, actually, not usually your ovals will all be kind of, like blended into your face so you won't see them all but i have lines that i that are still there i kind of love them so i just leave don't please don't obsess over that just you can try to like blend it more with your blending stick you could like come around here and like kind of do this and kind of ease them to kind of like cover some of them up and maybe make you less stressed out. Also having a really good eraser is also key. Also depends what paper you're using, how hard your pencil nib is. The softer the pencil, the easier it is to erase. There's like a lot of variables going on with that. But I would just say to fix that so you're not annoyed, I would actually use my blending stump and I would kind of like actually blend them in and just like incorporate them artistically into your drawing but I I see little bits of my guidelines everywhere and I love it I love it so yeah don't let that bother you <clears throat> oh Jolene I love that I'm glad you found us too <clears throat> mm, Angie and I really love seeing all your familiar faces it's literally the best oh you're the best Lori Hart <clears throat> oh bye Fern thank you for joining us today um can i please show us the book oh um i have so many books this one i think this one is the one this is the i actually made this book for me to be honest <laughs> um it's just it's it's like i i because i can go and be like what are those shades that go together and then i just literally like use these three use these three 
So I got answer key. Um, but that's what a lot of them. I have a lot of books and I usually make them for myself or my students. And then I just publish them so everybody can grab one. I think this is one that you're talking about. <clears throat> um, oh yeah. This is always another thing that people get very upset about. Um, it depends. I mean, you can put it in a frame behind glass that will keep it smudge free. I don't treat my drawings with anything. I just, um, I actually keep them. I'll show you. I keep them in like a portfolio like this and that way they don't get, um, they don't get smooshed. So I will like rip her out. Oh, this one's even big, but I keep all my artwork in these like portfolios and that'll keep it from getting smudged and nice. Um, I have like hundreds of those <laughs> and they're all just in there. You can, but if it's in like an art journal, it shouldn't get smooshed. Um, if I'm going to spray, you can always spray a fixative. I hate fixative and spray. I don't like any of that stuff. So I tend not to, but you can totally use them. That's what they're for. So I use a, fis a fixative or an acrylic spray sealer. If I do want to really preserve, preserve something, I'll use an acrylic spray sealer and it does not matter the brand just as long as it has the words acrylic spray matte. If it's going in any kind of book or anything, it should be a matte sealer. Yep. The replays are all are here already. Do you just click the same links and you can watch th this back right now? You just literally like start it over again. And it's the same link, same everything. Oh, I love this. Oakley, you're 63 in October. Well, I have to say you are by far a young person here because I have students in their 90s and they are all, they are all <laughs> loving it and starting it. So, um, so you are in, you are a baby in my world. <laughs> I love it. Um, oh, th so this, that's kind of a loaded question, Dorothy. I actually don't recommend Copics for if you're a beginner because they're so expensive. I do recommend Ohuhu. They're all actually, I, that this whole book is written based on the Ohuhu skin tone set. So, and I have, um, all of the color combinations from Ohuhu in there. Yeah. Copics are just too expensive. <clears throat> oh, Sharon Holmberg is here. I love watching your drawings, girlfriend, every single day. Um, <laughs> oh, good. I, Heidi was able to keep up. Good. I'm so glad. Do, do, do. Um, this drawing challenge is just for club members. I have other, my 100 fun fat bases drawing is on my mixed media YouTube channel. And that is there. If you want all of the resources and everything that go with that, cause that's like 22 lessons that is for sale at awesomeartschool.com as well. See, Jan's about to turn 71. I know. Awesome. 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 Oh, I love that so much. I'm 66 in the club makes me feel 18. I know we're kind of naughty in the club. We have a lot of fun. There's some a lot of references to swearing. <laughs> I'm so glad. Great. It's so, it's so fun. Oh, you're so welcome. Sorry, I'm trying to highlight uh, comments. And then there's so many coming in. I'm having, I'm like struggling. Oh, I love that. Wendy, she's 64. <clears throat> You've been a Wonder Bundle member for a year. Yay. I know I am obsessed. This is all that I do. Hooray. Yeah, it is a great little book. It's just like my cheat. <laughs> I just want to know the answers. What do I do here? I do I use it all the time. For this, for the this drawing, we do it from the skin tone on page 51. So I was like, I don't know what to do. And so look, and I even grabbed her hair color. I was like, oh, it was Alex cute. So I literally then I was like, I just grabbed these three markers and I followed the shading one, two steps, one, two, three but I use the reference from today. So it's another great way to mix and match your inspiration and your references in a way that makes sense. Oh, I love that. I love it. Look at this. Vicky 73, Judy 72. I'm telling you, I know 63 is a baby. I love this. By the way, I fart a lot. Nice. I love it so much. Ah, Liz is 75. Um, yes, I will. It's the Facebook group, which is, I'm going to put it in the, oh, it's facebook.com.
Sorry, I just clicked a button and I lost myself. Sorry about that. Oh, thank you. I'm just going to highlight this. Yeah, there we go. It's fart. It's fart along. Because you're arting along. <laughs> yes, I should have brought some um, art along is... Yep, thank you. I should have brought my um, pencil pouches down, but in case you're new to my world, I have a lot of books. So these are all on the table. <laughs> if you win, you can pick any book. And they're actually, I'm not even, they're not even all here. You can pick any book or any pencil pouch, which there are 17 designs. So, so fun. Yay! Oh, thank you, Valerie. Valerie's another amazing soul who lights up our Facebook group every single day. Oh, good. Oh, thank you, Bridget. Bridget Bruce. That's awesome. Oh, I, I literally live for this stuff. I'm obsessed. Yay! We have another person with a 65 birthday on Sunday. Well, happy almost birthday. <clears throat> you have all my books. That's amazing, Jolene. I know so many books. I can't wait to work on the figures one, but I'm really using this challenge and the figures I'll be teaching in this challenge will all be in that book. So you're really getting like a huge kind of deep dive with me. <gasps> Shirley Lynn is 87. Yeah, Shirley. That is amazing. Oh, I love that. So, so fun. Yeah, the pencil pouches are no joke. They're absolutely enormous. I don't even have, I don't know if I have any down here. <clears throat> um... I don't think I do. Oh, Maggie, Maggie. Ah! Like, I know. I don't mess around with swag. Like, this is like our, this is one of the totes. They're, they're like, you, they have big sizes. I don't, I don't mess around with swag. I really like, like, if you're going to have a giveaway, like, let's have a good giveaway. You know what I mean? I don't want like a sticker. Stickers are so boring. Like a pin. I don't want a pin. I want like something big, good, juicy. And I pay for shipping. You know what? You don't have to pay for your shipping. I've heard the, the most craziest giveaways. I know there's so many pencil pouches. <clears throat> yeah, art beaks are awesome. I have a whole set of so any alcohol marker. I have like these are all off-brand markers, and they come. You can get tons of skin tone colors, um, and you can get them for very very cheap. Yes, that is yes, Jeanette. That is correct. It is part along. Sorry, I am sorry. I know I can't type. I just xed myself out of the whole thing trying to do that. <laughs> The so the website you can see this little pink thing on the bottom actually that actually tells you where to go. So it's awesomeartschool.com. You can enroll in the Fun Fab Drawing Club. That's where this whole series is starting. And it's gonna go for a few months because we got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of faces to draw and a lot of figures to learn too, which I am super excited about. And then the Facebook group where we have the giveaways is in this. <clears throat> so yeah. Sharon says, I need all of those. I know. So yeah. Hooray, hooray. All right. Well, let me see what time it is. Oh, I'm surprised that my dog has not been, has not been, oh, she's right there bothering me. We're 47 minutes past her L-U-N-C-H time. I can't believe she's been so good this whole time. <clears throat> um... I, I haven't tried it because the colors are not the same. So I haven't, and I have Copic. So if I was going to refill them, I would just refill them with Copic. Like I would refill Copics with Copics. Do you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Cause the colors are like different. So I wouldn't know how to, I'm sure you can though. Cause you can just pour, you can pour the ink. Oh, oh my God. I almost spilled my whole thing of water. Like this, this is a Copic refill and you can just you can just squeeze it like in onto the nib of any marker, but your colors will not be the same. So if that makes sense, but you can do it. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, Penny, Penny just joined the fun fact joining club. Yay, Penny brace yourself. Cause we're going to have some fun. It is so much. Yes. Correct. You, Oh, who is I keep hearing where are going to, but no, yeah, they don't have refills. But they're also, oh, that's good. I guess Jeanette says they're selling individual markers with the most po popular colors. 
Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I just chuck mine when they're out. And I also, there's so many different brands and they're so cheap. I just like grab different packs. I'm so bad. So bad. <clears throat> oh, Sue. Well, I'm so glad that you got to sign up. And I really think the Fun Fab Drawing Club is definitely an awesome place to get out of your art funk, especially when we do these series and challenges because we're all doing them together at the same time. It's very motivating because you're like, oh, no, like there's a new one coming out on Sunday and I haven't like finished number three or whatever. And doing the doing many different variations is not is super not required. Like I don't have time to do them all, but like even just doing um let me share my like even just doing the two that I did like was already so fun for me like it was so fun and I learned and I challenged like every one more that you do you can do but this is all optional but those one and six classes the face and the six you will always get from me and it's so consistent um and then sometimes we'll go on a tangent you know like we'll have a zoom meeting and they'll be like, you know what? I really, I love doing this one so much. Like, can you do it again? But with this new face, I'll be like, of course I can. <laughs> so things like that happen. So you can really have an opportunity to get involved and all those zooms are all recorded and you can watch those back as well. Um, there's just a lot of opportunity for like a community um, and growth and fun. It's so much fun. <clears throat> Oh, good. Susie says she jumped from mixed media to fun fab drawing club. And I'm so glad my drawing skills have jumped. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're cool. And that's why I have different clubs because people are interested in different things. And I am, I love all the things. So then I get to do all of it. up. <laughs> um, Heidi, you can just go. Yeah, you um, actually, if you just go to the awesomeartschool.com main page, you can log in first and then join. Um, or you can just actually... Or you can click on Fun Fab Drawing Club and then there's a place to log in, I think, during the checkout process. But um, it's pretty intuitive. If that makes sense. Um, oh, yeah, I don't know why. I saw that you put put you on the wait list. I click sign up now. It takes me to the page. Oh, Okay. Can Cheryl, can you email me and I'll send you the link? I don't know what's going on there, but can you email me? My email is Karen at awesomeartschool.com. I definitely want to make sure that if you want to join today that you can get in there. So Karen at awesomeartschool.com. Um, I just saw that you did that. I'm like, how did someone get on the wait list when it's open right now? That's weird. So please, I want to make sure that you're taken care of. Or Tara, can you email her? Because you get that same notification as well. Oh, I know the Zoom meetings are like a, are, are really informational. I just show up to answer questions. We just like hash out whatever we need to talk about. Um, so all the lessons are pre-recorded. I just think for playback purposes, that's really the best experience for the students. Um, but then the Zooms are nice because we can be like, wait, what was that thing? And what paper is this? And what's going on? Kind of like this, but then Zoom so we can like actually talk to each other, which is really nice. Um, oh yeah, this whole, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know me too. So yeah, this whole 12 page packet and this can also grow. Like if you guys are like, yeah, can we have more whatever? I'll just add to it. Yeah. This whole packet is, will be included, uh, is included with the series. Oh, I got it. Absolutely. Yeah. So Sunday when it opens, cause it's a whole new, um, it's a whole new classroom within the fun fab drawing club. So you'll go there and you'll get all this stuff. It was really fun. It's actually really fun curating like the different thinking about like face shapes. And then this one, and then this one reminded me that we had a request in one of the Zoom calls to have someone with glasses on. And I was like, oh yeah, I have to do that. So like, I'll do it right now. So that's why I put glasses on her. So um, yeah, so this whole packet you get and then anything else that I create will just get added to it. And then you guys get all that. All the things, all the things. Um, let me just make sure I how long does it run? Well, till we're done. Every other week, face, I don't know, I can't do math. A long time. <laughs> because it's 20 lessons, so 40 weeks. However long 40 weeks is, it'll last at least 40 weeks. <clears throat> um, 
yes, I do vary the I do vary the times of the Zoom calls. Also, the Zoom calls are not like mandatory or anything. And I'm just answering questions. You can always answer, you can always ask me questions every day, anyways. Like you can email me. I'm in the Facebook group every day. So it's not like if you can't make a Zoom call, you're missing out. Um oh yeah. And but yeah, I have I have I have them at different times every time. So I don't know what they're there. I change it up all the time. I'll have them at nine o'clock in the morning. I'll have one at six o'clock. PM, so they shouldn't all be at 6 a.m. <clears throat> oh, awesome. Melinda just switched over to the drawing club. Amazing. Oh, okay. Well, that's amazing. That's not a great, that's a great reason to have to go to the hospital. Congratulations, Diana. That's amazing. And all the lessons stay in the club too. They don't like disappear. They they don't go away. And well, you have access to like year all my lessons since 2018. When you join, you have them all. So um, it's kind of bananas. Uh, yeah, everything, this kind of all opens on Sunday. Correct. Correct. Sunday. Oh, the price is the same no matter where you are. Yeah. It's $33 a month. It's like a buck a day. And then it's three or $330 a year. So the year one, you get two months free and then you get hard, you get paperback copies of two of the books. Uh, mail to your house. <clears throat> why is it all going to the wait list? I don't know why that wait list is showing up. Well, make sure you, I know why you wait listed you that show. Brenda, can you email me too? So if I go to awesome, Art, I'm going to go to awesome art school right now myself, actually, and find out why. So it should just look like this. That's very strange. Share screen. So it should look like this when you go to Osmart School. It's right here, Fun Fab Drawing Club. So I don't know why it would be going to the wait list, but I will definitely check that out. <clears throat> That's weird. And you should be able to just join right from there. Um, but I will check that out like immediately in case someone else is having that issue. And Sue said that went through just fine. So I'm not sure. Oh, if you're not signed in. Okay. So maybe don't sign into your account if you have an account. Hi, Donna Lyon. I see you, girlfriend. I can't wait to see you. October. I'm counting the minutes. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> awesome. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. Actually, Ellen, there, a lot of people don't participate in the Zooms. They just come and hang out and they just listen. They don't have their cameras on, but they just come for the community and to like listen in, you know, and that's also what you can do for the replays as well. I'm like hugging my books. <laughs> hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Susie, no worries. Yeah. My email is Karen at awesomeartschool.com. Um, it's literally... Here we go. That's my name, Karen. And then it's at awesomeartschool.com is my email. Oh, now Maggie's like, I want my dinner, my lunch. Okay. I'm, yes, we have a Scotland retreat every year, twice a year, actually. Um... <laughs> I know, Maggie, I got to go. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to hop off. If anyone has any questions, please email me. And I will help you. I also will reach out to anyone if I see that they lend up on the wait list. Um, normally, everything is waitlisted. Um, I will email you with the link so you can join. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> that mean okay. So don't log in as a student, Tara. So I think that's what's happening. The, I think it shows up if anyone has ever put their name on a wait list and they log in. You need to click all course offerings at the top, but that's a lot to direct people towards. So they can just email me, Karen at awesomeartschool.com and we'll make sure that you can get in. Yeah, log out and then you can see it. Exactly. You can watch the replay right now, Kiki. Yes, Maggie's mad at me. I, should, I can't believe she's not yelled at me before now. I'm like a full on hour late. <gasps> all right, you guys, I know she's done. <clears throat> Awesome. Well, you can watch the replay right now, Kiki. Thank you, everyone, for drawing along. If you want to be entered into the giveaway, post your final drawings in the Facebook group. Search for Awesome Art School on Facebook. 
and the groups and you can use the hashtag fart along to be entered to win or Karen's YouTube that also works. Um, and if you want to jump in the whole series forevermore, come and join the Fun Fab Drawing Club. Just go to awesomeartschool.com today and, and tomorrow. And then that's it. And then we're going back to the wait list. All right, friends. Thank you so much for arting and farting with me today. It was a total blast. Have an awesome rest of your day. I'll see you soon. Bye.